Today, we're going to take a look at seven reasons why handyman businesses fail. And you are not going to want to miss number seven because it's probably the number one reason why most businesses fail. First off, let's start with some statistics, shall we? Did you know that about half of all small businesses fail within the first five years, with many of those failing in the first couple of years? And nine out of 10 will fail before the 10th year. So how do we keep your handyman business from becoming one of those statistics? There is power in learning from others. So let's take a look at seven reasons most handyman businesses fail. Number one, having an employee mindset versus a business owner mindset. Remember, you are creating a business, not just a job for yourself. And way too many small business owners approach their business from a job mentality. Yes, you are doing handyman work, but you are a small business owner who owns a handyman business. It is critical that you identify as the business owner and not just the handyman. For many of you, you are the only person in the business. Therefore, you wear the employee hat as well as the business owner hat. So it is easy to get lost in the employee mindset. I'm sure you have heard of the saying, working in your business versus on your business. The employee works in the business and the business owner works on the business. When a business owner spends all of their time working in the business, then the business begins to fail due to no one taking the reins on where the business is going. And more importantly, no one is looking out for the profitability of the business. The second problem with having an employee mindset versus a business owner mindset comes when you are making decisions. An employee will solve the problems of the moment, but the business owner needs to solve not only the current problem, but think of a longer term solution. Business owners are constantly improving the business's processes. When the business owner is thinking like an employee, the business tends to just exist versus having a clear vision on where it is going and focusing on constant improvement. Number two, paying yourself incorrectly in the business. As I just mentioned, you are wearing two hats in your business. Therefore, you are also being paid two different ways in the business, especially if you are doing employee work in the business, which most of you typically are. In the beginning, most small business owners tend to pocket what money is left at the end of the day after paying their costs. Later, they tend to take a flat fee out of the business. However, keep in mind, those are employee wages. The business owner you is paid out of the profits of the business. Just because you're taking money each month doesn't mean you are being paid as a business owner as well as an employee. Businesses fail when they focus on this employee income versus creating a business that pays you as both the employee and as the business owner. The handyman businesses that fail have typically created a job for themselves versus a solid business. It is critical that you pay yourself a fair wage as an employee in your business, and it is just as critical that you focus on the profitability of the business and creating an owner's wage as well. It is only after you are able to pay yourself both ways are you considered a successful business that can beat the odds. Which leads us to the third most common reason handyman businesses fail pricing their services incorrectly. A huge mistake that handyman businesses make is how they price their services. When your pricing is off, we end up making less money for the business. Keep in mind the simple formula for your success. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. This is the basic flow of money through your business. And since sales is the first part of our formula, it is safe to say that it starts with pricing correctly. Way too many handyman businesses undervalue their services, costing them profits. They fail to account for the right amount of costs, expenses, but also that employee wage as well as the owner's profits. But profits aren't the only thing that bad pricing impacts. When you are priced incorrectly, you will end up working longer and longer hours chasing new sales to pay bills and soon burnout will set in. When this happens, so does the realization that it was easier to just work for someone else. After struggling to make ends meet and working 60 to 70 hours a week, the handyman business owner closes the business. The goal of pricing isn't to be the cheapest. It isn't a race to the bottom. It is about charging correctly for the value you provide. While most handymen can fix something or install things, not all of them can do it the way that you do it. It will be your skill level, your service, your hours, or any special sauce you bring to the table. But you need to know your value. Stand out above the others and charge accordingly. This isn't a pricing video, so if you want to learn more about pricing, I'll put a link below to other videos I have on pricing. Please make sure that you are pricing correctly. You really need to make sure you are being paid as both the handyman and the business owner. It is the single biggest mistake small business owners make. Mistake number four, not being crystal clear on who your ideal customer is. 
Yes, you want to serve every customer that has a need that you can solve. You want to make sure that everybody uses your business over your competition. But if you approach it this way, you're going to end up serving no one. Even worse, you will get every person under the sun that only wants your cheap services because you haven't set the stage for who you would love to serve. Think of it this way. There are handyman businesses that specialize in all types of tasks that they can do around the home. Some might like to be known as the cheaper plumber or electrician in town. Some like to do fencing or decks as they like the bigger repair projects. And some will do small honeydew lists from around the home as they hate doing the bigger projects. They would all target different customers. Some handymen are specialists in older homes and others like to install blinds and fans in the newer homes. One would target older neighborhoods while the other would target newer communities. Do you want to be a handyman that specializes in property management repairs or one that hooks up with realtors to help with getting the inspection repairs done? Who do you want to serve? Chasing rental neighborhoods might not pay the same as a high owner occupant neighborhoods. You need to know who you want to serve and focus on solving their problems. Be their specialist. By being a specialist, you can charge more. There is a reason a brain surgeon, a heart doctor, etc. make more than a doctor who is just a family doctor. You get the idea. The more you narrow down, the bigger the following you can create without having to spend tons of money on advertising and trying to find new customers. If you chase everyone, you might just end up with the types of customers you don't want to serve. There are a lot of people out there that do what it is that you do. So how will you be the go-to handyman, you know, the one that everybody wants to use? So focus your attention and energy on those you want to serve. Now, the fifth reason handyman businesses fail is because they expand beyond their local community way too soon. The average business has thousands of homes within 5 to 10 miles of their location. However, in a bid to grow the business, they mistakenly chase business 30 to 60 minutes outside of their area, thus driving up their costs, wear and tear on their vehicles, and lost jobs due to being on the road all the time. Another thing way too many business owners try to do is they jump to a new city and try to expand to get more business when the reality is there's plenty of business close to home. Just think about how many homes are within a 15-minute drive of where you are currently. I'm pretty sure most of them have some type of work that a handyman can do. A typical handyman only gets about 3 to 5% of their local area. What if you could get that up to 10 or 15%? That's more than doubling your business and sometimes tripling your business. But trust me, there is plenty of business in your hometown. Quit spending time, energy, and resources and gas and wear and tear on your vehicle to go everywhere under the sun when you don't need to. Businesses fail when they chase business that does not help their bottom line, and business outside of your immediate area comes at a cost. And while you might gain more sales, those extra costs will hit your profitability. And as we discussed, without profit, the business will fail. Focus on a smaller area, and I promise you, word of mouth will get out, and you'll start getting other people that will come to you, especially if you focus on that ideal customer we were talking about earlier. Okay, the number six reason why handyman businesses fail is poor communication with your customers. One of the most overlooked items that kill a small business is poor communication. How many times have you and a customer butted heads over something that turned out to be a communication problem? But this type of communication problem isn't the only issue that can hurt your handyman business. How often are you staying in touch with your past clients? This is a great way to encourage returning customers and guarantee future sales. Not to mention top of mind awareness when their friends call needing a referral. Ever call a business and never get a call back? How often does this happen in your business? Do you actually have a message that tells folks you'll call them back within the next 24 hours? And more importantly, do you actually do it? How do you handle those emergency situations? Yes, not all things are emergencies, but if someone is about to get hurt, if something isn't fixed, and then it might be an emergency to them. There are a ton of businesses that have websites that have an email for potential clients to reach them. Yet this email doesn't either work or no one ever reaches back out to you. This happens to me all the time when I'm trying to use a business. Heck, I have attempted to use small businesses that do not respond to either their email or their phone calls, and then they wonder why their business isn't making any money and will soon fail. By the way, poor communication happens with employees as well. Owners failing to communicate clear expectations to their team often leads to a loss in business. Good communication also helps you stand up from your competition as well. I love all the business I have received over the years due to my competition being horrible at communication. It has led to thousands of dollars in my pocket. Never underestimate the power of good communication to lead to more business and profits. Okay, the biggest reason handyman businesses fail is the seventh reason, which is not knowing or understanding their business numbers. Okay, folks, let me tell you, businesses fail for a variety of reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is due to not knowing your business numbers. If a business owner knows their business numbers, they are more likely to react to problems way before they become profit killers. They are smarter about how they spend their business's profits and they ensure that they get a return on the money they spend in the business. They tend to price better and they tend not to chase sales that they shouldn't be chasing. 
Earlier, I shared my number one calculation that I think all small business owners need to know. Sales minus cast of goods minus expenses equals profits. This is the basis of all business numbers. It is the flow of money through your business. Understanding your profit and loss ensures that you know where your hard earned money is going. It is the business's report card. Businesses fail when they shoot from the hip day after day without looking at the numbers and understanding what is the best decision for them to make. Everything you do in your business will be tied to your numbers. This doesn't mean you need to memorize anything other than sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. The calculator is your best friend and you can look up anything else you need to know. But there is a power in looking at your business's trends. What does each March look like? How are your sales spread out across the months? What are they telling you? When should you be preparing for the next season? The list goes on and on. Want to purchase a new piece of equipment? Great. Use your numbers to determine what type of return you need to get off that equipment just to break even. Just like words in a book tell you a story, so do the numbers of your business. You just want to learn what story your numbers are telling you. I know you want to run a very profitable handyman business. Remember, your business has one job, to be profitable. Yes, you need to provide a great service with amazing customer service, but in order for the business not to fail, you must make money. Your business numbers are the key to you not making simple mistakes that can lead to your handyman business closing its doors. I give you my promise. I will continue to create more videos to help you understand your business numbers better. There is even an affordable course below for those that don't want to go hunting for all the videos. Listen, I could build a list of 20 reasons handyman businesses fail, but if you focus on these seven areas, you will give yourself a fighting chance to beat the statistics and have a thriving business. For more videos to help you grow your handyman business, then don't forget to hit subscribe and click that bell. Don't forget to check out one of these videos showing on the screen.